my god how much you can tell from just a summary like this about a backend architecture you can tell so much from this hidden things yesterday february 2022nd 2022 slack experienced an outage around three hours from 6 a.m pst up until 9 a.m pst and that prevented new users to connect to slack so if you're already connected you should be you should have been able to be uh, to work with slack fine but if you want to reconnect to slack that's when you were prevented and this is clearly explained as to why in their recent summary how about we jump into it and just kind of summarize this outage so the outage started around 6 a.m pst uh with with a half an hour later slack posted a message we're investigating the issue or slack is not loading for some users we're looking into it and then few slowly they started to figure out this issue they don't usually say during the outage what exactly is the cause because one they don't really know truly what's the cause second they don't really want to say something and then take it back you know because some company used to do that where say oh we think it's this but oh it turns out it's something else so uh up until really 10 a.m and 11 where everything is basically resolved so what really caused it uh we don't have an actual root cause analysis you have to slack as notorious that you have to actually request one so i just did uh, but we have a an, a kind of nice summary how about we go through the summary and then uh, discuss that what systems actually were affected uh, calls messaging search link preview apps post files pretty much anything that requires a database right so what what, what caused it what really caused it let's read on february 22nd 2022 from 6 a.m to 9 14 pst customers may not have been able to access slack they say may because some people might already have connected a configuration change adversely led to a sudden increase in activity it's like everything starts with a configuration change you know things unexpectedly happen when you change the configuration right? so they don't say what kind of config configuration it is but whatever this configuration led to a sudden increase in activity on our database infrastructure so and we we know when when we get an increased amount of load to the database uh, the database cpu gets hogged effectively because that's the that that's the commodity that's the most important commodity in the database you know if the database keeps start keeping busy just executing queries then new queries that is submitted to the database will get queued for cpu time right and we're talking thousand if not hundreds of thousand of these queries right for number of query for for these for specific number of users one user doesn't equal one query we wish but it's usually that's where a good backend design also comes into the picture right then if you have one connection that executes 10,000 queries then you really need to rethink your data modeling you really need to think your backend uh, design why are we executing this much queries just to get connected and and you need to think scaling and in, in mind i have no idea what what um, slack has in that situation so Due to this increased activity because of that configuration change, the affected databases failed to serve incoming requests to connect to Slack. So what, what does that mean, failed? Right? That tells me that there was some sort of a timeout set in one of these reverse proxy layers. right? Because databases just don't fail. They fail because either you have some sort of a governor set on your database layer where it says hey if a query takes i don't know x amount of cpu cycles for x amount of time kill it you know you can have some some, some databases support that uh, or if you can let the client who calls that database query actually cancel after a certain amount of time right if if we're if if their query is not getting executed 
uh, we introduce tighter rate limit on connection requests to reduce the load on the system. So their solution, because they saw that database is getting, uh, <laughs> you know, hammered, and if they didn't do something about it, what will happen? The database will become the bottleneck. Nobody will be able to do anything. Right? Even connected users who want to just send a message or read messages, they won't be able to do any of that stuff. Right? So they could either let the database implode on itself or just reduce the number of connections. So let's just put some rate limit. Let's stop people from connecting. That's that's a that's a valid solution, right? This meant that some people could not connect to Slack at all. It's like, hey, we will not just let you you cannot even connect. So at that at the API gateway probably or the reverse proxy, they set a rule that's hey, just any new sin requests, just eh, stop them, right? Any any TCP sin request or or a three-way handshake just stop it right there don't don't let it continue right, that's one way to do it at least but also that slack would continue to work for those who are already connected I'm sorry my voice is a little bit low because it's very early on here and baby's sleeping so uh, i need to get this out before the day starts once the system had stabilized we began lifting these rate limits to enable more connection to slack so system has stabilized we still don't know what that means yet because uh, are, are you waiting for all the queries to to settle and the cpu go back to normal? this you know what this told me this told me that the connection new connection to slack is extremely expensive on the database tier uh, it's io and cpu bound that's what tells me my god how much you can tell from from just a summary like this about a back-end architecture you can tell so much from this hidden things this is what tells me right this tells me that the new connections are extremely expensive so uh, this is what just happened to the bank of canada right so if some of all of the people try to withdraw their money at the same time the system will go down you know this the the slack is our killer's heel if you will is is this new connection right that's apparently expensive reading all the metadata and reading messages what's in my inbox that's expensive and i think they should do something about that make it as lazy perhaps However, we moved too quickly and the increased activity affected the system again. We reinstated the rate limit and redirected some traffic to the database replicas to relieve the demand on our primary databases. So again, some of hidden things that we're getting here. The requests, that once they left out the rate limit, they, the, the, the increased activity came again because of the new system request right the new slack request means new database queries and these database queries created a bottleneck so whatever this configuration we still don't know what it changed really we don't know so what they did is they redirected traffic to the database replica i thought you you must already have database replica so they either spun up new database read replicas and they uh, funnel the read request to that and write request can go continue to go to the primary database really odd i thought they already have done this in place they probably just needed meant that they scaled with traffic distributed across databases additional databases additional database so that means they did spin up new databases we gradually lifted the rate limits to allow more people to connect to slack this allowed the system to recover while steadily restoring full access to all users by 9 for 14 a.m pst everyone should have been able to connect to slack again then they say we know our customers rely on slack personally i don't use slack so that's why I, I didn't know about this outage until late night yesterday i think if you would like to let you receive a full root cause analysis yes yes please uh please reach out uh, i just did actually send them an email so if i got an email we'll go through uh we'll go through a reading one of all deep dive analysis 
that you guys laugh and just just uh, rip this apart and try to understand what, what really happened again they keep mentioning this uh, issue the clearing cache we talked about this in the previous coverage where control command shift r is actually clearing any cache and causing the 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 re request to go directly to the database which <laughs> ironically i think people already know this trick if you use like you probably know this and i believe anyone muscle memory now kicks in and they continue to use that and i think this actually puts more load in the database when people do that <laughs> so uh, this is kind of a double-edged sword if you know what I mean it's because you want people to hit the cache yeah the cache might be stale but if you if everyone uses like knows about this and all the time they do the control shift r if anything happens oh I don't see my message control shift r I don't see my message control shift r that actually puts more load on the database if you think about it but yeah guys uh, what do you think about it as did you, how did you uh, were you affected and uh, let's wait for the full report to actually analyze this thing um kind of interested to see what exactly this configuration was just like why would this configuration affect the database load would love to know all right what do you guys think about this gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye